Tell us about this telepathic communication with animals. How, how do you really define it? Yes. So a lot of times people, when they hear telepathy, they think, oh, well, that's something strange. But if you break down the word, you even get what it is. It's tele-distance, pathy feeling. So you're feeling across a distance. So it's the ability to receive feelings and thoughts and impressions and intentions. For, and we're talking about animals. So from animals. And it's actually a very natural ability that we're all born with to get others' intentions, to get their thoughts, to get their energies, to get right. their feelings. And our society kind of socializes us out of it mm. so that people then go into more into their left brain and go, oh, well, that isn't logical or it's not analytical and it doesn't. Whereas when you're younger, you just kind of go, oh, of course I know what the dog is feeling. Of course I know what the, the bird is feeling happy. And you don't deny it, but then it gets socialized again and again out of people. And it's really incredible to see people regain and recover their native ability because they get happier. Absolutely, <laughs> which is the bottom line, and, and there's nothing better than that. This is something that's teachable yes. for others. Yes. How does that work? Well, it's very interesting that people, because they've suppressed it, a lot of times it's suppressed under layers and layers of fear of being told they're wrong and no, uh, lots of, lots of invalidated Societal, things. Yeah. Uh, yes, from their parents, from their um, other Peers. kids, it, it, you know, so... What happens is that people, when they start opening up this ability, they love animals. You know, the people that come for this kind of training, they already love animals. And they start to shed that other stuff, the stuff of I'm not a good person. I can't really do things. I'm not really intuitive. And all of a sudden, they start to be more empowered themselves. So it's, it's quite a miracle. So I just tell people, okay, I wrote steps for them so that they could learn how to make it a game, make it light, because they get very serious about it, and then it closes down for them. And then I wrote my book, Animal Talk, which has the steps of how people can open up to the ability. And then people start to remember, you know, and I do the courses, uh, do the trainings, um, in the classes, people would start to go, oh, I remember. I used to do this. And then it all starts flooding in. When I was a kid, I could understand them. And then I remember even when I suppressed it, when I felt it was dangerous. Right. You know, that I no longer could do this anymore. Right. So yes, people recover it. And some people have a harder time at it, especially people that have gone very left brain, you know, where they everything has to be sequential. And because this is, this is feeling. Right. This is about feeling another. Right. And opening up to feeling. So you have to open up to your own feeling. And then you can open up to another's feeling. And so people then have to shift gears. And it's, it's sort of like for, uh, for a lot of people, it's like crossing a chasm. You know, they, they suddenly make the leap and they go, there's a different world out here. And here's my dog who I've always loved, but I always felt different from, yeah. separated from. Right. Now, we're walking the path together. together. And my dog is telling me how I should live my life. And now I'm listening. You know, my dog is my guide. People, you know, realize that their dog or their cat or their bird or whoever it is has been helping them, they guiding them. They sense a lot of things yeah, yes. in advance of us. So it's really a natural ability. This is what I want to stress is that it's not something way out there. It's no, not something yeah. only a few people possess. We all have it natively to open up to and remember.